Now, next up talking friends and foes is William Regal, who just got let go by WWE and NXT. We spoke a moment ago about how technically proficient Bret Hart was, and certainly Regal's in that category as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mechanic, all those guys from England are like fit. You know, Billy Robinson, who broke me in, all those guys. It's a different style, but it's really, you can't see through it. It's solid as hell. I mean, with that, those forearm shivers that guys have, like, like Dory use, if you don't, if you don't, if you're not ready for that, it'll, it'll knock your teeth right through your lip. Yeah, uh, you're, and you're right. That's very accurate. The English style, the semi-shoot yeah, style. And yeah. Heck, in, in Billy Robinson's case, an all-out shooting style, yeah, he was yeah. very respected in, in that regard. Yeah. And it's realistic. But, now, but, but, but Billy was a bully, and, uh, and Steve and, uh, and Fit weren't. Right, right. Oh, big, big difference there for sure. Yeah. And, uh, and it's realistic. And I'm not sure realistic is necessarily a strength these days. I'm not sure the fans expect it to look real anymore. Oh, I think they do. You know, really? once again, well, here's the deal. That they, I, and I don't understand all this, but um, um, the um, the pace of the of the of the matches is so different now. But when they slow it down, like Edge and Randy did, or uh, those guys, I mean, the, I think that everybody's wrapped up in the demographics. I don't know what audience means more. But I think the people that expect to see real wrestling you know, we're at a slower pace, as opposed to real wrestling, which goes by so fast that you can't enjoy it because nobody's selling anything. Does that make sense? Yeah, for sure. For sure. I um, mean, how, how do you take a DDT off the top rope and get up and that's not the finish? Well, and how do you take a lot of these moves, Nate, and pop right back up and go on without having sold? I... I uh, Nothing I was in an anything. indie show about ten years ago. I'll tell a little story here, and then we'll get back to, to William Regal. I was in an indie show about ten years ago, and these two kids were working, and and they've both gone on to work in major promotions. So I'm not going to make them sound like dolts by by mentioning who they are now. But you know, they asked me what I thought of the match, and I go, "You guys didn't sell enough." And they go, "Well, what do you mean?" I said, "There was a spot where one guy came off the top rope to the floor, and the guy on the floor." got him in a cravat on the way down and rammed his chin off the guardrail. And Nates, they were up and they were up to the next spot in nine seconds. I know. Cause I timed it. Yeah. I counted. I, I said, how long are they going to stay down? They stayed down nine seconds after the, after the match. I said, that could have killed the guy come yeah. literally killed him coming off the top rope. And they both said to me, nah, you're, you're wrong. People, people want us to get right back to it. And I go, okay. Yeah, but I almost people- did. That's why you're in a, in a yeah. high school gym yeah. in McKeesport, but, but okay. Exactly, but that, see, that's what's going on in the business. One day, pacing will be different. The next day, it's full speed ahead again. But uh, yeah. if you look at some of the finishes um, that are, the guys are taking out that are false finishes, it, it just doesn't make sense. And I think that hurts the business more than anything. If you go, well, how in the hell did that possibly happen? Look up, they're back up. And then something even more devastating. And then they went with a roll up. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> how, many, how many times have you seen it? Oh, all the time. Please. Now, how many how many matches did you work with Regal? I don't recall a lot, even though you were in WCW together quite a bit. Well, probably 25 or 30 times. What, what was that like? What were those matches like? Oh, great. It's a, it's a history lesson for a guy like me, because I couldn't ever wrestle that technically. No, it just I love working with Steve. Well, what were some of the things that he would do in a match with you that maybe you weren't used to? And and like you said, how much did it teach you? How much did you take out of that? Well, that's it's it's important for every wrestler to understand. You could take something thirty years later and see something if you have that have that opportunity. And I took a lot of what Steve did. Uh, I didn't apply it to my work because I'd already had a a game plan. You know what I mean? But it made me realize how important some of these final, fundamental things that he could do that I didn't do were what made him great. Because Steve Regal will never be considered a great worker, but Steve Regal was a great worker. Oh, I think I think among the boys and among the yeah, students but I mean, he trained, I, he's considered a great worker. Yeah, exactly. But, I mean, he'll never get that recognition. 
Well, anybody. Let's stay, let's stay with the teaching aspect of it because you heard great things about him as a teacher at NXT. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, he was there when your daughter broke in, correct? Um. Yes, he was. Yep, Steve was. I, I, how I much? Steve... Now, I know your daughter worked mostly with Fit. Uh, yeah. a lot back then. But how much? How much did she work with Regal? Was he at all a factor in her development? Uh, I don't think so. Not nearly as much as Fit. I mean, Fit. I thought he he was the very best. And whether what whatever happened, I, I have no idea. But for a guy like Fit, with all this wisdom and knowledge, who's traveled the world, wrestled worldwide and every possible wrestling formula or culture there is, right? He would sit down with the girls and I could just see, I could see Ashley and I could see Sasha and I could see Becky and I could see anybody he worked with, him laying it out. And, and they just, they, you could tell them that he, he held their attention. You know what I mean? Where me, I'm ADD, I'm bouncing around. If someone's trying to lay out a match to me, I can't. That's why I could never really have a good match with, with Randy. And I had a tough time having a good match with Paige. These guys that wanted to, you know, it's not even predetermined, but wanted to go out there and have this match put in cement, not knowing how the crowd would react. I just have never been able to do that. And maybe, maybe that maybe that's a flaw in my in my work. Oh no, I don't think so. I just think you 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 were trained a different way and came from a different time. And I'm yeah, I'm not so sure that wasn't a better way to do it when I look at the matches then and look at the matches now. Mm -hmm. Well. You just you can tell sometimes that they're doing going through a routine, and the fans aren't buying it. You know what I mean, and that you you see that more, more you see that more than you think you do, but that's 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 it's not going to change. And in all fairness, again, like I try to qualify statements, the kids don't have the time. If 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 Ron, the the if Steiner's son, right, is, let's say he's had thirty matches. How you can't learn how to be a great for what he, for the time he's been in the ring, he's he's really really good, but it's going to be if twenty five or thirty matches, you're just learning the business and probably wrestling the same guys. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, no, no. He that, I, that's, I, that's, that's he even I, had thirty matches. I, I don't know. I've heard that from Terry Taylor. I don't know, but we you know. Let's look look how good he'll be in two or three years from now. That's why Randy is so damn good. He's rest, Randy's been on top, on top for 20 years and still on top. He's not the champion, but he's still the best worker they have. Now, now, why wasn't Regal a bigger star? He was a, a good worker. He had a good look. He had the British aristocracy thing going, that kind yeah. of vibe. Why do you think he didn't break through? Because I think he should have. I don't know. I, I can't give you a reason, an answer. I know that. what you mean, because there's some guys that you just think should have been bigger and you, you can't really explain why, and he's one of them. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, it's hard to explain. I mean, why wasn't Fit a bigger star? Yeah. It, was, it, wasn't, it certainly wasn't because he couldn't work. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it certainly wasn't because he didn't have a great persona and presentation yeah, I, because exactly, yeah. Regal did too. Yeah, I, I don't know. But I, you, you can say that about a number of people that, that are really good and, and they don't get the opportunity. Uh, and, and, then you, and then you'll see somebody that you can't even believe is getting a world title shot. How does that happen? Well, that that that's as old as the business itself, certainly as long as I've been yeah. following. And one yeah. thing Regal did I really liked back in WCW, remember when they paired him with Bobby Eaton? And yeah. they did the Blue Bloods. Yeah. And Regal yeah. was trying to teach Bobby how to be a nobleman. It was kind yeah. of like My Fair Lady yeah. Yeah. Or, or Pretty Woman in wrestling. And I thought that came off really good. It was funny. And they it were did. great in the ring. It did. Oh, yeah. And Bobby Eaton, G-R-E-A-T. Yep. Underline three explanation points. Well, I used to say that the best tag team in wrestling was whatever but, tag team Bobby Eaton but, was in. But nobody is ever going to say that because they don't realize what they're talking about. When you talk about the top 20 workers in the business, Bobby Eaton is in it. No question. But his, his talent was hidden because he was in a tag team situation and because he didn't have great mic skills. But right. in-ring work, come on. Well, that's why during that era when tag team wrestling was so big, it was the perfect yeah. time for him. Yeah, yeah. Because like I said, the best tag team was whatever tag team he was in. Yep, and and Cornette was a hell of a manager. It was it was great.
Now, uh, before we uh, move on, uh, here's a great trivia question, H. Uh, Regal was WCW World TV champ four times. Who held the TV title the most? Double A. Nope. Can I get in there try it? Take another shot. The TV title. It's not, was it Iron? Nope. That that was my first guess too, but I looked it up. And it wasn't, Re- it was Regal. Um, TV title. I don't know. Booker T, six times. Oh, okay. All right. I love Booker T. Oh, he's the best. Yeah, uh, and, and, yeah. You know, great guy, great worker, yeah, great yeah, everything. Yeah, you yeah. know, I would have bet it was Arn too, but he was tied with Regal at four. Although, you know what Arn told me once? Disco Inferno won the uh, WCW TV title. Yeah. And Arn said to me, the era of of being uh, the FTC, that, that's what he called it, the former television yeah. champion. Yeah. He said the prestige of FTC died. When somebody got the title who had Boogie Knight stenciled on his ass. Yeah, hey, come here. The, going back to the TV title. So <laughs> Randy came in and and Hunter was leaving, right? And that's when I had something to say about it. And so it was Randy's opinion that he beat Hunter in five seconds. I said, Hunter's been here is an established commodity. How about you wrestle Arn Anderson for 15 minutes and go draw? <laughs> he he called me at home screaming. He said, I blew up. I told you I got it. Man, I, I said, buy a Stairmaster. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that idea of just creaming a guy coming in, forget that. They that, That's why they, that, I was the guy to get creamed. Not going to cream some kid on his way out on a high road like Hunter was. Not going to happen. Not, not, not on my watch. Now, uh, Regal was almost always a heel. And, and he ultimately did cream me, so there you go. <laughs> Regal was almost always a heel, as I recall it, and, and that's good. We talked about how Steamboat could never be a heel. Yeah. I don't think Regal would have made a good baby face. He just had those heel characteristics. Yeah, I think, too, I agree. He's, uh, first of all, he's a very charming guy. As, as a person, he could have no made question. it. But he's, he's a much better worker as a, as a heel. His, his, face, his facials, crisp, sharp, stiff. All, 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 all good traits for a guy that, that trying to portray themselves with a heel. 